Good morning guys or shall I say good afternoon because it's already 2 p.m. in the 8 in the in the afternoon. So today is like another super busy day. So in order to be an architect you have to like be good at multitasking. Right here I'm doing some draft. Let's just Okay, so right here I'm doing some draft things and then doing 3D work. And then somewhere around here I am planning the work schedule of the workers. And then here I am doing some um, estimation of metal things you know and also um, I'm eating and to top it all off I'm also recording this and with this with this situation right here so that's, that's like five things one two three also one common um, misconception about architects is that they are bad at math um, we're not bad at math we're, we just I in my case not not all architects just this is just in my case guys so in my case I get easily confused by numbers. So once numbers come up, I get confused. I get afraid. I run away. So <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what the stereotypical architect is: multitasking, eating, vlogging, estimating, planning. You know. Welcome to vlog number five. I think this is number five. See, whenever there's numbers, I get confused. I I think this is vlog number five. Numbers are scary, guys. Multitasking doesn't just end in the office. It also applies here in the site where you have to do multiple things at a time. So yeah, you could be measuring stuff and then that's not how to use this thing. Looking at drawings and also calling someone. One order ng kidney milk, please. So not only do architects have to be good at multitasking, uh, they also have to be good at thinking on our feet because most of the times uh, when you're at the site, people are gonna ask you random questions. So you have to be prepared for those questions, you know? So yeah. Also, I don't know why I chose this spot to film. Super hard to... Super hard to get out of here. So in order to be an architect, you also have to be physically strong. Watch. One, one hand, guys. See. All right. Physically strong. If you guys are wondering, Zillion, how did you get into such a good physical state? This is my secret, guys. I call this the architect's pull-up. So, here's what you do. 90 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, back again 90, 40, 60, 30 degrees, and back again 90, 45, 30. Alright guys, so you guys have to be physically strong so that you're able to climb high, high air places like this. Also, you guys have to be super brave so that you are able to climb up and check some stuff like the process. So, yep, process are good. Have to go down. Yep. It wasn't that high, guys. Okay, so aside from physical strength, architects should also be mentally strong. So architects need to have an in-depth knowledge about the tools and the, the materials that you're using so that when workers ask you what a tool is for, you could easily answer. Alright guys, so let's say you have all of those qualities down, you have the physical abilities, you have the mental abilities, you have the multitasking abilities, you also need another thing, which is drawing abilities, so, so drawing abilities is very important in architecture guys, as you see right here, super important, look at that drawing, so awesome. So last but not least, in order to be an architect, you guys have to be super cool. So in order to be cool, you guys got to look cool. 
basically here's how to look cool guys the only color that you should be wearing is black or white it should be monochromatic also you need these types of jeans like types of jeans with holes in them and the most important part the ps de resistance i don't know what that means is the safety boots being safe is being cool guys so take that from me in 2018 being safe is being cool so, something like that yeah okay guys so all jokes aside you don't really need all those things to become an architect the only thing that you need is persistence and creativity that's that's like two things so so you, you guys need like two things to become an architect you need to be creative and persistence but mainly the persistence part so what does this mean persistence persistence is not giving up guys so persistence is keep on going not quitting no matter how hard all the things become I read somewhere that um, it takes a thousand hours to become a master at something looking at it a thousand hours looks so scary like it's, it's unachievable but if you break it down this way okay so let's say you practice something two hours a day so that's two hours times 365 so you already got 730 hours down in a year so if you practice two hours in one year you're almost there to a thousand hours to becoming a master of something okay guys so basically that's the that's the main foundation of becoming an architect it's persistence yeah so for those of you out there who are aspiring to be architects or to become something that you've always dreamed of like you want to be a doctor an artist a youtuber an architect persistence is the key guys so keep on persisting don't quit and I assure you if you don't quit and you just keep doing what you love to do and give it your all 100% I assure you guys you are going to reach your goal and you are going to become that thing that you've always dreamed of that didn't sound so epic that thing you've always dreamed of okay guys so that's the video I hope this video inspires you guys to chase your dreams and do what you love flying peace <laughs>